Hello and welcome to another beautiful day in Wicklow. I'm down at one of my new favourite spots. As you know, during the lockdown, we couldn't go anywhere. We were restricted to two kilometres, then five kilometres. And I can tell you, there's no gold within two kilometres of my house. Trust me, I've dug every hole available. Then we got five kilometres and that gave us a little bit more expansion. But now, as you know, as it stands at present, it's travel anywhere within your county, which in my case is Wicklow, or 20 kilometres from home. So that covers me pretty much for anywhere that I want to go. So the area I'm working today is a small, tiny little drain, and I'll show you that in just a second. So the last time I was down here, there was barely any water here at all. So what I ended up having to do was I just stockpiled dirt. Because the river was pretty much running dry, I was able to dig and dig and dig, and I able to stockpile as much dirt as possible. Now, I didn't classify it, and that's what we'll be doing today. Now, I've got to hurry up now because the sun goes down in roughly about one hour. So... Let's go find the shiny. Now this is one of the best pieces of equipment I've ever made. In very, very simple terms, what this is, is a hoodle classifier. You pick these up in the range or pretty much any shop. Uh, all it is, is it's a one and a half inch classifier to begin with. And what I've gone and done is I've zip tied one and a quarter inch mesh directly below. Um, and then just to give it extra rigidity so I can bounce it, is I've gone and used a hose clip. This is a one and a quarter inch uh, clip for you'd usually use for putting these pipes on the wall. This is a one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. You'd usually use this for your drain or your sink or whatever, and uh, clips in perfectly. And then just to hold it, then I have some bolts. So that's the setup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this up with water, and then I'm going to start running the pay dirt in. As I say, we now have 50 minutes until sunset. That's okay, right. so now I have the uh, bucket set up here beside me. First thing I'm going to need to do though is I'm going to need to fill that bucket with water. So. Because of the fact that this river is so shallow, the only, the quickest, best way to do it is to just suck a tube into it. Now, because of the fact that again, it's so narrow, I'm gonna suck a tube into a metal bucket. So I don't have to worry about classifying. I also don't have to worry about rocks hitting this class, hit this bucket and damaging it, as has happened with other buckets in the past. So I'll just pop that down there. What we're now gonna do is just fill up that bucket with water. And once you get that bucket full of water, then we'll fill up the other one and then we'll be good to go. Let's move on. Okay, so here we have the bucket set up. So I've got it nice and filled up with water now. So at the moment, I don't have any, uh, any of the pay dirt in it just now. As you can see, it's pulled up a lot of twigs and branches. I dumped that off. The beauty of this one is because of the fact that it's submerged, that's when you're classifying, you really have to have a situation where the classifier is continuously submerged. Because if you look, if I take any of these big rocks and pop them in here, if they're not submerged, then it'll take forever. You have to keep dumping more water back and forth and back and forth. So what I'm gonna do now is, just to save on time, rather than putting in the bucket, I'm just gonna get some dirt in the stockpile that I've filled up just beside me here. As I know this material is classified, and we just dump it in. Now, unfortunately, this bucket's on a bit of an angle, so it's not perfectly submerged the whole way down. But as you can see, I hope you can see that properly, it's submerged here. So just get a little bit more water into that with the gold sucker, sucker tube. Perfect. Okay, so that's good. So that's not overflow now. So now we know we're good to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit more shoveling of some more dirt. I'll show you the stockpile of dirt in just a second. Okay, so there's one shovel. Time it. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, done. Next shovel, please. Now obviously I've got all this dirt ready to go. It's not like I'm digging it out of the ground. It's sitting here ready to go. Lovely lumps of, uh, of iron quartz, iron rock. There are some nice pieces of quartz here as well. Perfect, next one. We gotta be really quick here because as I say, we've got maybe 45 minutes. Officially it's nine o'clock now. And the sun goes down at around quarter to 10, 10, 10, somewhere around that. And because I'm in a valley, I've got a little bit less time than I normally would have in that regard. Just want to make sure you can see that properly. Okay, so now onto our fourth bucket, our fourth shovel. Now normally I wouldn't just use my hand like this. It's only because it's not perfectly level and I'm just literally on the clock here. I don't have time to sit around getting things perfectly. The other thing as well, the sluice box is not working perfectly. It's not on the correct angle. But as I said to you before, I'm on the clock here. 
I have to get this done as quickly as possible. I'm just going to put a bit more water on that. Perfect. So now that's right, perfectly on the water. So now we can just give it a good rattle side to side. Because it's clay, I like to just use my hands as well. Make sure all the clays work down. Bounce it a few times and we're done. Next one. <clears throat> you can see where this is literally the fastest way of classifying. Now yes, there are other classifiers you can buy in other parts of the world that are very fast, but they're quite expensive. And I'm sure they do work better than this one, but this one cost a grand total of, well the classifier itself cost four euro, the wire mesh I'd say eight euro, but that was for a giant sheet, and I've only used a small bit of it. So I'd say at absolute most, including the pipe and fittings, I'd say this cost me maybe 12 euro. And in this part of the world, you can't just walk into a shop and buy something. In this part of the world, really the only option is just to make something yourself. I'm very impressed I had this working. Like previously, I wouldn't have stockpiled this much dirt and ran everything in one go, but as I said to you, I'm on the clock here. I've got only a few, not even half an hour, maybe 40 minutes at most before the, uh, before the sun starts to go down. So we may only get to run one bucket. And then we also have to factor in the clean out time as well. Excellent stuff. As you see, we have the sluice set up and ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the material through. As you know, all the material here is streamed down to quarter inch. I haven't tested it yet, so I'm hoping it works properly. You know, that looks a bit fast. Right, that's a different rock. Let's try that one. Still a bit quick. Yeah, I can still see, see the cells are exchanging. When I have this slew set up in the river with the flare on it, I just couldn't fit the flare here today. But when I have a set up with the flare, normally what will happen is it'll, uh, it'll run material in about 10 seconds. A lot of people often ask why you go out panning for gold if you don't find so much gold that you can sell it so you don't make any money of it. To be perfectly honest, if you just listen for a second. Other than the flow of the water, the birds. The flow of the water, the birds, it helps you get away from all that's going on. I won't say the word because that word is everywhere. Something, something, 19. Everywhere. You go onto YouTube, you go onto Google, you go onto Facebook, anywhere you go, you see that word. So this is a, that word free zone. This is where we come out, reconnect with nature, listen to the birds, and just relax. To be honest, looking for gold is just an excuse to be out in the wilderness. If it wasn't gold, I'd be into archery or cabin building or camping, bird watching. Just any excuse to be out in nature. That being said, I love looking for gold. So I'll just give you a close up of the end of the sluice there where the tailings are coming off. You can see where the clay just hasn't quite broken up correctly. I wonder, is that maybe a bit too steep? Obviously there's too much water at the epicenter where the water hits. But beyond that, it is exchanging. You can see where all the riffles are exchanging correctly. So, oh, whatever. Right, I'll keep going with this and uh, hopefully we can do the clean up before it gets dark. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. So I managed to clean out the sluice. I didn't have time to film that because it is literally coming up on about 20 past, what do we know? 25 past nine, so only a few minutes left. So what I'm gonna do is there's such a small amount of concentrates, I probably won't even need to pan it in the water. I'll do that bit first and then I'll come back to you and we'll do the, no, give me that. Oh, you've got to be joking. That's just gonna fly. Okay, just to make life easy, I've gone and filled the bottle with water. 
and you can see it weighs 8.64 grams. Okay, the scales are settled out there at 8.71. That means today's total is 0 0.07 worth of gold. So that's not too bad, considering we only ran one bucket of material. So uh, I know where I'll be digging next time. See you again there. Bye-bye.